We appreciate so very much this fine gathering, and I know that you will not be disappointed because the man that we're wanting to honor is so worthy of the honor. I feel inadequate to the task myself, and I'm not going to have too much to say. I'm going to leave most of the saying to Brother Eddie Parrish, but we're here to honor Dan Winkler. And I was telling Dan and Diane a few moments ago that I knew his parents more than I knew him. And of course, I know Dan by reputation, and I've met him several times, for which I'm thankful, and he has his lovely wife, Diane, with him today. They're indeed a, a classic Christian couple, and uh, we love them from afar. I've never been closely associated with Dan. I wish I could have been, but I haven't. I have held meetings with Mike, uh, and he's been, uh, I'm, I know him better than I know you, Dan, but, but I love Dan because of his work sake. You know, those of us who preach the gospel hear of other gospel preachers. Sometimes we hear things that are not good, and that always grieves us, but I'm always delighted to hear good things. I've never heard anything but good about you, Dan, and that's, that's a compliment. Uh, what a wonderful reputation the Winkler family has. Uh, Fran and I have known Wendell and Betty for a long, long time because uh, he was associated here and, and I've been associated here and so, so we've, we've come to know them and, and uh, Wendell, of course, has passed on to his uh, wonderful reward. But uh, we feel close to the Winkler family. Uh, and, and we loved Wendell and Betty, and now we love Dan and Mike and Tim. And I did get to be with Tim. I held a meeting in Tuscaloosa. Wendell had arranged that, and, and he had passed on, though, before I went there for the meeting. But a friend I got to be with Betty, visited in the home several times, and went out to visit your father's grave. And, and so I know them real well. But, but we love Dan. We love him for his work's sake because he is a, a preacher's preacher. There's no question about it, and those of you who heard him last night can bear witness to that, a masterpiece, uh, a powerful presentation. Uh, the content was excellent, and the actual presentation was excellent. And this is the kind of reputation he has all over the Brotherhood. And so it's an honor to me to be able to give some degree of honor to Dan. And uh, for what it's worth, Dan, Fran and I truly love you and Diane, and, and of course, uh, we shared down deep in our hearts the tragedy you all experienced, and uh, uh, you don't know how many times we prayed for you that God would be with you and, and help you through that horrible ordeal, and all the way through it, uh, the way you all handled yourself and all was just marvelous, and, and uh, that impressed us greatly, and I just thought to myself how many other people are being impressed for what's good and right and true by observing y'all's conduct. So we truly love you and I think I express that for this whole congregation. We love the Winkler family and we love you and appreciate you for what you've done, for what you continue to do in preaching the gospel and spreading the good news to so many people who hear you. So from my vantage point, I love you Dan and it's a pleasure and a privilege for us to honor you here at, at the 37th annual Fort Worth Lectureship. Your dad was very much involved in the early ones, and now we're carrying on uh, that same thing. And Diane, that includes you too. Well, you know, we say we're honoring Dan, but it always includes the wife, because those of us who preach know how valuable the preacher's wife is. I, I know I could not have done what I've done had it not been for Fran standing by my side as you stood by the side of Dan. So when we honor Dan, it's also inclusive of Diane. So I'm going to turn it over to, to Eddie Parrish. Uh, as all of you know, we suffered a blow this morning and I'm, I'm not really emotionally prepared to, to say much more. So I'm going to turn it over to, and let me just say this about Eddie. I love him dearly. I tell him that all the time, but I really mean it. He is, he is such a great, great man of God, just like Dan is. And, and I often thank God in my prayers for the tie that binds our hearts together. I look out over this gathering like Robert Dodson. 
uh, what a wonderful man. And I could just go from one to, to another. The Wayne Jackson's two sons here, and we all love Wayne. And so God's blessings uh, certainly are with us. And I think how wonderful heaven's going to be when we all get home and uh, sing praises to our Heavenly Father in bliss and happiness and joy, free from all the tears and heartaches of this old life. I'm sure God is watching now as we honor you. Know we love you very, very dearly. Eddie. I know Dan will have an opportunity in uh, just a moment to say a few words. Uh, I know of gratitude for, to all of you for being here, but if I may jump ahead of him in that and on their behalf thank all of you uh, for coming today for this very special occasion. As uh, Maxie mentioned, the Winkler family has long been special to us at Brown Trail, and uh, Dan has uh, has become special to us as well, though in a different way uh, than his father. His father, of course, here and uh, preaching here, serving as the director of the school and uh, the director of the lectureship uh, for a number of years, beginning with the first one here and continuing for several years after that. But Dan's influence here uh, has been through his writing and his preaching on a number of occasions on the lectureship in the past and certainly this year. And so his influence is, is here as it is in a lot of other places. As we mentioned yesterday, he's currently preaching for the Lord's Church in Huntingdon, Tennessee. And I believe that's your second stint with the Huntingdon Church uh, there. And that says a lot uh, to uh, Dan's character for a preacher of the gospel to be able to leave a congregation uh, to go to other places and then be able to go back to that same congregation uh, and continue uh, that kind of work is a testament to him and to Diane and their, uh, their character. Dan is also uh, teaching uh, as an adjunct professor at Fried Hardeman University in the Bible Department. I think I mentioned this yesterday at how popular his classes are uh, with the students there and he has a tremendous impact on young lives through that work as well. His writing includes several books in the series called Life-Changing Studies with an Open Bible that he and his father uh, and uh, his brother Mike uh, put together and wrote. Each one wrote different books in that series. If you don't have that series of, uh, of booklets, uh, I encourage you to get a hold of those. Excellent, excellent Bible class material and personal study material. I've used them often and still do. There's really no way for us to gauge how many preachers of the gospel have been influenced for good through the sessions that Dan has done at events like Polishing the Pulpit that takes place in eastern uh, Tennessee each year. I've been privileged to go there uh, several years and one of the first things I do, and Jared Jackson made a similar comment to me last night, that when we get to PTP, one of the first things we do is find out when's Dan speaking. We just block off those times because we know that it's going to be beneficial material, that it's going to be deep and practical. Uh, and he has touched a lot of lives through that program uh, that his father helped to begin. Uh, and I think about programs like Focal Point, which is very similar to Polishing the Pulpit. Focal Point takes place down in San Marcos, Texas every year in May. And uh, Dan is usually there every year and does similar things, uh, practical things for preachers and their work. I still have notes from sessions that he's done on time management in preaching and, and uh, things of that nature that are, that are so very helpful his work at, at the lectureship at Fried Hardeman, other events, gospel meetings, all of those things are just a small part of the impact that he has had and continues to have on people's lives. But before we present uh, Dan with a material token of our appreciation 
for his work in the kingdom. I want to share something uh, personal with you about Dan. I write in a, in a journal periodically. I don't do it every day, but usually when things happen that are especially significant to me, I'll, I'll take some time to jot some things down. And I want to uh, read to you a portion of two entries in my personal journal that I have made in the past. And I remember at the, as I was thinking about this, I remembered writing some things. I didn't remember exactly what I had said until I went back and thumbed through and found them. So if, if you will allow me, I'd, I'd like to read from them. This one from May 11th, 2011. This would have been at the time of focal point. I wrote these words. No preacher can move me emotionally like Dan Winkler. He may never know how much he means to me, though I do not know him well. When we meet, we always embrace, and he always asks about my work and family. We sat together for the first session tonight. Then he spoke at the second session on the cross of Christ, an amazing lesson on an amazing topic. As people were expressing their appreciation to him and complimenting his preaching ability, he always diverted the praise to God. I have heard him do this many times. That is a testament to the kind of man he is. Here's another entry that I made in September, September 22nd of this past year, 2013. Last Thursday and Friday, I was privileged to attend and speak on the annual lectureship at the Bear Valley Church in Denver, Colorado. It was a great trip, and I wanted to record the reasons. First, I was able to spend almost the entire day Friday with Dan Winkler. He will never know how much he has helped me over the past 10 years or so through sermons I've been privileged to hear him preach. On Friday, we rode together from the airport to our hotel. I was able to buy him lunch as we visited in the hotel restaurant. That evening, he spoke first on the lectureship, and then I followed him. When we returned to the hotel, we had dinner together. He bought. <laughs> and we visited more. I didn't get to bed until after midnight. But being able But being able to talk with Dan about preaching, ministry struggles, sermon planning, the nature of God, the joy of being a Christian, and other topics was a treat I will long remember. Dan is a great man of God. That captures something of who, um, of who Dan Winkler is to me and to a lot of others. A lover of Jesus, a friend of preachers, a student of scripture, a passionate proclaimer of the good news, gracious when under fire, and an encourager of Christians. May God bless the kingdom of his son with more men like Dan Winkler. I'd like to read this to you. This is more the official offering and then give you an opportunity, Dan, to say whatever you'd like. With grateful appreciation, we honor Dan Winkler, servant of God, proclaimer of divine truth, friend of preachers, encourager of Christians, teacher of the young, Christian gentleman, lover of Jesus. Your desire to bring honor and glory to God through humble service in his kingdom has drawn countless souls nearer to the cross. With our sincere gratitude, we give you a small token of our appreciation. Honor to whom honor is due luncheon, 37th Annual Fort Worth Lectures, January 15, 2014. And this token of our appreciation that we would like for you to take home with you 
is a mantel clock. It simply says Winkler. Dan, thank you for being here. Please come get your clock. Thank you, Eddie. I didn't mean to seem disconnected typing on my phone, but my hands don't write very well anymore. When you get to a certain age, that happens, I understand. And so this is how I write now, and I just did not want to miss forgetting anything about saying thank you for this wonderful privilege and honor of this afternoon. I want to just first of all say thank you for that great meal. Amen? Amen? Thank you ladies who all put it together and thank you ladies and young people and gentlemen back in the back for serving it. That was just wonderful. It was good. Really appreciated it. And thank you so much for the event of the afternoon. I don't feel worthy at all for something like this feel very much, as I said to Maxie, like kind of fish out of water flopping on the shore. But I receive it very graciously, and I'm so thankful that you thought of me and of Diane in wanting us to be here for this occasion. It's a joy to be with Maxie and with Fran. I've heard the names Maxie Boren and Fran Boren, to I just don't know how long. They are very, very dear friends of my mother, and of course we're uh, to my late father. They loved y'all very deeply. Thought so much of you. And it's a delight to sit at the same table with you and to get to know you a little better and experience your love. Eddie, I can't begin to tell you what those kind words meant to me. Thank you for sharing those with me. You never know as you walk through the paths of life what footprints you're leaving on the shores of time. And when someone takes the time to say thank you in ways so beautifully, it touches your heart, and I'm very thankful to you. I remember being here in 1995, not in this room. I believe we were over there, and that was your gathering room at the time. In fact, this afternoon, uh, we were going to the multipurpose room or to the whatever room you call this, and that's where we were headed. And, in, and uh, we realized we were going in the wrong direction. And at 1995, y'all were doing something like this for my father. And I remember the joy of sitting in a wonderful room like this and you paying tribute to my dad. And for that, I want in his behalf to say thank you. And I'm very grateful that uh, you thought of him in that way. I wish that he could be here. It's been a while. He's been gone eight years now. Boy, there are some times... I wish I could just pick up the phone and say, what's going on? You probably don't know this, but in the last year or two of his life, as I would drive to Fried Hardeman, Fried Hardeman, I've been going there almost 10 years now, every Tuesday and every Thursday to teach in the afternoons. And it was my routine on the way to call my dad. And for about 20 minutes, we would converse. And I remember the first trip after we had buried my daddy. I thought, I can't reach for the phone. I thought, man, I can't talk to my daddy today. And there are days, eight years later, you still feel that way. Thank you for loving him. Thank you for remembering him. And thank you for the kind words you shared about him and my mother since we've been here over the last couple of days. I really wish he could be here. I wish my mother could be here, and indeed she had planned on being, but she tore a muscle in her hip and was not able to make the trip. And so uh, we have conversed about it, and I told her, please don't come. Please don't come. And so she acquiesced, and she stood, stayed home even though she would love to be here and, and get a hug from so many of you that love her and that she loves. 
I'd love for her to be here today. <clears throat> I wish my brothers could be here. I love Mike and I love Tim. Mike preaches for the Madison Church of Christ in Huntsville, Alabama. And he is a tremendous gospel preacher. Amen. I tell people, if you want a great local preacher, don't call my name. Don't call my number. You want a great God. You don't have to shake your head and grease so quickly on that one. Now. <laughs> I said, if you want to talk to a great local preacher, you need to get the number of my brother. He is one of the best gospel preachers engaging in successful local ministry that I know. Wish my youngest brother Tim could be here. He's a surgeon, and he has retired from surgery, but is engaging in wound center care and still helping a lot of people. You remember Mike as your youth minister at Brown Trail. You remember Tim when he would put on his coveralls and go probably fishing to the pond that's over on the hill. These have become great servants of Jesus in their adult years. Great husbands, great fathers, great, well, Mike, great grandfather, and Tim one day probably as well. I'm glad I can look over here and see Jared and Jason. I love their daddy and their mama, but I love them. They mean a lot to me. To know that they're here for this great lectureship to be blessed to see them last night when we went into an establishment to eat supper was just a delight, but to know that they cared enough to be here this afternoon. Thank you, guys. Love you. You're very special. It's been wonderful to reminisce. I look out and I see individuals from the congregation that I served when I was here in Fort Worth almost 40 years ago. To look into the eyes of individuals with the congregation that I served outside of Dallas some 35 years ago. To reflect, to embrace, to experience your love. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. I'm glad to see Sister Pendergrass and Sister Hammonds, dear friends of my mother dear friends of our family, and they bothered to come. I don't know, Sister Hammonds, Roxy, we call her. She said, you go on, I'm slow, I'm slow. She's always been slow. <laughs> I don't know where you are, Roxy. But thank, there, you are. there they are, right over there. Two very, very special ladies to me and our family. And thank you all for being here today. I wish my brethren from Huntington could be here. Yes, it is the second, second stint that we've been there. Somebody says, you can't go back as a preacher. I say, well, that all depends on how you behaved the first time you were there. <laughs> we were there for about five years and then decided to make an adjustment. Been back now almost 10, and it was like just putting on an old pair of shoes. We had kept our friendships aflame there for many, many years. And the Lord has blessed that work so immensely, and we feel tremendously blessed to be back in Huntington to work with that great church. And I'm so thankful, and I wish they could be here. We serve under five wonderful elders, and uh, there are three young men that serve as our co-workers, co-ministers, all three of them recent graduates from Freed Hardeman, all three of them former students. They can't say a word, all I can say is, I remember what you made on that test. <laughs> they are maturing tremendously well as servants of the Lord, and uh, we feel very blessed. I'm so glad that Diane can be with me today. This does not belong to me. It, it belongs to her. Thank you for putting her name on it, not mine. She took that name 42 years ago. And she has worn it with great honor. Amen. 
I try to be a good preacher, but I'm married to a great preacher's wife. And for those of you who are ministers of the gospel and married, she is your greatest asset. Treat her so. I wish my sons could be here. They'd learn what a great father they have. <laughs> I've tried to tell them. Seriously, we have three sons. One is in the medical field on the business side and has served with what is called HCA now for almost 20 years in Nashville, Tennessee. He's head over their surgical center, been there forever. Great man, great servant of the Lord. Our second son, gospel preacher, sitting next to his grandfather, basking in the glory of Jesus. Our youngest son, in construction with Kroger, also a gospel preacher. He knows the book, stands by his convictions. He's a deacon in the church at the Creve Hall congregation in Nashville. And I wish they could be here with their wonderful families. I wish my grandchildren could be here so that we could share with you how special they really are. We've been doing that via pictures anyway. That's what grandparents do. Thank you. For though I could say I wish so-and-so were here and so-and-so were here, I am so very grateful that you are here. And I accept this with great humility, not feeling deserving whatsoever, and I have already said it to my Heavenly Father, but all of your kind words and gestures have been placed back into His care. For that's where they belong. And remember this, we are all here because there is one who is above all others, and He's the King of all kings, and He is the Lord of all lords, whose name means Savior, and that means something to you. Thank you. The man just makes me cry. I can't. <clears throat> We're going to um, bring this to a close and you can come and uh, express your Love and appreciation to Dan and Diane personally uh, in just a moment. Jared, would you come up and uh, lead us in prayer uh, to wrap up this wonderful occasion? Thank you for being here, and let's pray together. Jared. Let's pray. Our Holy Father in heaven, we come before you now, bowing before your throne. We are so honored to be your people, for you are a great God, and you have bought us and redeemed us from this world through your wonderful Son. We honor our brother and his wife for their great years of service and their influence upon us and what they mean to us as companions and family in your kingdom. We are so grateful for the great family that they represent and the good work and the victories that they have wrought in this warfare that we are engaged in. May we unite with our humble crowns and throw them down before the great crown that crowns our King and Master. Through Him we pray. Amen.